they're they're getting healthy. They don't necessarily need another outfielder. His bat kind of plays um, in a lot of parks, and his numbers speak for themselves. So you know, I think it's 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 smart of them to kind of give him the minors and use him as trade leverage for whatever they need, um, pitching, bat, defense, whatever. Um, so I kind of think that's what they're doing. Um, I'm a little concerned about Tucker. What do you think about it? Well, I, I've never been a big Tucker guy. You know that. I've said this on the show. I've, I've watched Tucker at uh, high A ball. Uh, I'm fortunate that Houston has a high, hey, I can't talk, high A ball team in the Carolina League. So he came through a couple years ago. And the problem with Tucker, there's a little bit of a, a hitch or a hesitancy, a loop, if you will, in his swing. Yep. I'm sure he's working on that, but I think that contributed to his lack of success last year in the short time he was in Houston. Um, And I think you're spot on. There's a reason why we've seen Jordan Alvarez and we've not seen Kyle Tucker. It's certainly not because Tyler White's tearing it up for Houston. I think you're exactly right. And I think he's a, I think he's traded. I think he's, and I look at San Francisco as a potential trade partner, and there are others, of course, but if you look at that situation, they are desperate for outfielders. Uh, of course, another team I'm thinking is a, is a great trade partner. Of course, in this situation, you're looking at um, you know, going in within the American League, but, but Cleveland, um, if they had a, an arm, or excuse me, if the, yes, if they have a young arm to send, say, a Tristan McKenzie, I don't know if San Francisco is interested in that or not, but they certainly need an outfielder in San Francisco, and it just seems to me that Tucker fits the bill. So I, I think he's more of a trade t- ticket right now than he is a call-up card for Houston. But it'll be interesting to see how it falls out. So, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, man, so thanks can for... You, can, I, can, can I give you one name before I let you get back to Yeah, you? sure, go ahead. And I want you to talk about him because I don't think he's gotten talked about very much. And he was someone just a couple of years ago was pretty highly regarded. He's fully recovered. He's pitching in AAA. Um, he's basically he's been fairly effective. Um, remember Jose De Leon? Yes, Dodger great Jose De Leon yep. came up with the game at what seventeen, eighteen, something like that. Great arm, um, and I got some stats on him. I had he and uh, Dustin May queued up just in case. Awesome. So, so I, um, I teed it up for you, huh? Yeah, you gave me you gave me a little uh, nugget last night, and I did some homework, so I'm ready to talk about him too. But yeah, I, I think that the former Dodger great is is a possibility. Tampa, I mean, they are loaded from within, and right. that's why I started the show saying it's, I think the Yankees are a prohibited favorite to win the East, and I think the the Rays are a prohibited favorite to be the number one wild card. Uh, they've just got so yeah. much pitching. And the minor league depth that they can build upon, um, like you said, from within, because that's that they're not going to be able to keep up on the with the Jones. Um, yeah. Austin, and, and New York specifically this year, right? Um, but but they can certainly um, add with that super team um, farm system they have. And in the playoffs, it's a different season, and it all comes down to pitching. And so you get the Rays in a one-game playoff with that pitching staff. And, and of course, you probably heard me talk about Blake Snell with a a turnaround game, hopefully for him yesterday. Um, But it ought to be a great season. And, yeah, I'll I'll get on those those two pitchers in just a moment. Chappie, thanks for calling, buddy. It's great to hear from you. We'll talk later, okay? All right, Ernie. Take care. Have a good one, man. You too, pal. Phil Chaplin, one of the great podcasters here on Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports, and I was doing my best to turn him up. He was fading in and out a little bit, but uh, what he wanted me to do was talk about a couple of pitchers, and I'm going to do that right now, okay, while we're while we're just sort of going through the standings. Uh, we'll, we'll pause. We'll get back to the Rays in just a moment. Dustin May, a potential call-up. He just got called up to Triple A by the Dodgers. 21-year-old pitcher. Uh, he has struck out 86 in 79 innings so far this year. He is a dark horse, but you know the Dodgers are short a starter right now with Rich Hill out. Stripling's been given that job, at least for the present. Not to say he is 
the long-term solution, it all depends on how he pitches, right? And so Ross Stripling, the starter now taking Hill's spot, but let's see how he does. And if he doesn't do well, Dustin May, 21-year-old now at AAA, is certainly someone who could get the call. And uh, he's got a great arm, great fastball. I want to talk about, real quick, Jose De Leon, Tampa Bay, getting back to the Rays. Uh, De Leon has been out. You know, he has an elbow. He had surgery. Came up as a 17-year-old Futures Game star with the Dodgers. Pitched for the Dodgers in a start or two. Looked really good. He was a good trade candidate. Dodgers trade him away. He gets hurt. Tampa picks him up. Give him a shot. Now he's at Durham pitching. And uh, he's had a little bit of control problems this year. However, over his last few starts, he has pitched somewhat better. And... Pitching well at Durham is certainly a plus for Jose de Leon. Now, you know, McKay was just there and came up after pitching 60, average 65 pitches per start in four starts for Durham. Now you've got de Leon uh, down there still. And don't be surprised to see him come up. He's got a 328 ERA at Durham. On the season, some stats for you just real quick. And they're conserving his pitching, too. His last start was June 25th. He's scheduled to start again today. He went uh, almost he went four and a third. He, again, a pitch limit on him and struck out seven. Okay, no home runs. Um, he's, he's had an ERA going on the downside of late. To keep your eye on Jose de Leon, you could do worse if you're looking to add pitching for a flyer, particularly in deep leagues. He's certainly someone that you may want to add. I could see him possibly getting the call. So we've covered. Thank you, Chappie. And I'll, I'll put my number on one more time. Thank you, Andrea, for editing that if you can and getting some more volume. Uh, again, I was trying to do my best. But you guys, you can call in. We can talk about fantasy. I'm putting my number back up in just a moment. No pre-recordings today. I like to mix, I like to keep you guys guessing. So sometimes I'll throw clips in. Sometimes I won't. I got enough material today without any recordings. So we're going to go straight through. Let's go to the uh, American League Central, where the Twins on July 1st are 53 and 30. Uh, and oh, by the way, the Yankees do have the best record now in the American League. The Twins 53 and 30 with an eight game lead over Cleveland. They have a 13 game lead over the White Sox. Cleveland, Minnesota. Minnesota, they have a wealth of riches. They spread it up and down the order. Of course, Rosario on the IL. He could come off uh, Sunday and play one game before the All Star break. Do you really think they're going to do that? I doubt it. He's probably out till the All Star break. So you've you've got Kapler playing, um, you've got injured players there. Not as serious as what you have with other teams. Rosario really the only one right now who is out. If you look at their batters, you've got um, you know Sano over the weekend. I watched a game and he just absolutely looked awesome. I don't know what he will do long term, uh, but and he's not been playing every day. He did go two for three on Friday with two home runs. He was one for three on Saturday with a home run and one for two yesterday. So a good weekend for Miguel Sano going four for eight with three home runs and seven RBIs. I'm sure the Twins would like to see more of that. Byron Buxton off of the IL started the last two games. Really not hitting, but back in the lineup, probably a timing thing. So a lot of credit goes to a lot of people, but none more so than shortstop Jorge Polanco. Polanco has been a hitting machine all year. 320 average, 11 homers. He scored 55 runs. He's driven in 39. He's at the top of that order. He plays a solid shortstop. You know, he was suspended last year, but he's back. And these are all, let me give you some more, Cap Kepler hitting 270 at the top of the order, went two for five on Saturday, did not play yet yesterday, but on Saturday going two for five, he hit two home runs. Check out these numbers. 
Max Kepler's hitting 270, 21 homers, 53 RBIs, and he bats leadoff most games. How about uh, C.J. Cron, 271 average, 17 home runs, 52 RBIs. And, of course, then you got Nelly Cruz, back off an injury, hitting 284. He homered yesterday. He homered twice on Saturday. 16 home runs, 46 RBIs. So when I say there's a wealth of riches and they spread it around, I'm, I'm telling it like it is. Um, the Twins have so many batters who can step up at any given time. Now, Cleveland... Eight games out, contenders in that wild card, great pitching performance yesterday from Bieber, eight innings shutout ball. I mean, the, the, but the Indians couldn't hit. I mean, you know, come on. Baltimore scores 13 against them on Friday night. They score 13 against them on Saturday. Yesterday, even though they win, they only score two runs. So when is Jose Ramirez going to really turn it on? He went 0 for 3 yesterday. About the time you think Ramirez is going to crank it in, he cranks it out. He was he didn't play Saturday. He didn't play Friday. When he did play last Wednesday, he went 0 for 2. So, you know, Ramirez is critical for the Indian success. Now, they've had some players who've come through. Carlos Santana hitting 293 with 18 bombs. Frankie Lindor, you know, injured at the beginning of the year, but he's hitting 291, 12 home runs, 12 stolen bases. Jason Kipnis has been hitting of late. He's riding a four-game hit streak. He's got his average up to 246. The Indians are players, and they play Kansas City at Kansas City starting tomorrow. Uh, so look for Cleveland to continue to be a, a wild-card player. I don't know if they make a trade. I, I think the talk of them trading Trevor Bauer is ludicrous at this point. Why in the world would you ever trade your best pitcher when you're contending for a while, for a playoff spot, wild card or, or division, and I don't rule out the division with the Cleveland Indians. I really don't. They are only eight games out. They've played eighty-three games, so you got you know seventy-nine games to go, an eight-game lead. It's not insurmountable. It, it's not going to be easy, but if Cleveland can start hitting the ball with more consistency, and I do know this rookie, they've got Mercado. He's hitting 314. He went three for five yesterday, and he has been a godsend for the Cleveland Indians. I still think they're looking an outfielder. I, I don't know what they're going to do at the trade deadline, but I look for them to do something. Now, Kansas City could be a trade partner, and I'll tell you why. Kansas City, they're, they're, they're in last place in the division, but they've got a batter on their team who can play outfield, Play right field. He's hit 22 home runs. He's got 55 RBIs. No, it's not Whit Merrifield. No, it's not Mondesi. Jorge Soler. Yeah, Jorge Soler. Have you not heard us talk about him all year? How Jorge Soler could be the first Kansas City Royal, maybe ever, to hit 40 home runs. Name me another Kansas City Royal who in a given season for Kansas City has hit 40 home runs. And tell me the last time it happened. Jorge Soler, 22 homers. Two for four yesterday. And they play today. So I'm not just talking about season long. I'm talking about daily now too. If you're playing daily fantasy, who do the Kansas City Royals play today? They play the Toronto Blue Jays in Toronto, a hitter's part. Clayton Richard pitching for Toronto a left-hander, remember Soler is a right-handed bat. Richard has a 6.89 ERA. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Soler is probably on some waiver wires in some shallower leagues. I had him yesterday in a league I'm in. I think he which I can deal with a 233, 240 average if I can get 22 bombs. And that's what he provides. So Take a look at that. In the Western Division of the American League, Houston, 53-32. and 32. They've now won three in a row. Things are turning around a little bit for the Houston Astros. Yes, they are. They have a six-and-a-half game lead over Texas, and they have a seven-game lead over the swinging A's of Oakland. Altuve is still not Altuve. He's hitting two 
55, but he did go.